about a about 60 percent of people who are on welfare went to work or went to school. Most of them who did now say in retrospect they wish they'd done it earlier. Uh, and, and, and so there's a model here that the conservatives will all applaud. But my point to conservatives is it's a model of responsibility. Well, if I see somebody who's earning over $50,000 a year who has made the calculated decision not to buy health insurance, I'm looking at somebody who is absolutely as irresponsible as anybody who was ever on welfare. Because what they've said is, A, I'm gambling that I won't get sick, and B, I'm gambling that if I do get sick, I can cheat all my neighbors. Now, when you talk to hospitals, a very significant part of their non-collectibles are people who have money, but who've calculated that it's not worth the cost to collect them. And so I'm actually in favor of finding a way to say, if you're above whatever the, whatever the appropriate income level is, you ought to have uh, either a either you ought to either have health insurance or you ought to post a bond. But we have no right, we have no right in this society to have a free rider approach if you're well off economically to say we'll cheat our neighbors. One last comment. We should really look at tax equalization across the whole system because the way you're going to migrate to an individual purchase of health insurance is to have the same tax deductibility, whether you buy it individually, you buy it as a small company, you buy it as a large corporation, and to have a very robust tax credit uh, for the working poor and then a voucher for Medicaid. One, uh, thank you very much. One uh, concept.